Hello, everyone. I am here. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about longevity and lifespan of our dogs and cats today because we all know they don't get to spend as much time on this planet as we do and not nearly as much as we'd like to have with them. Um, dogs and cats are amazing and they bring so much love and happiness to our life and they really are treat teachers to us as well if we take the time to tune in. Uh, when you were growing up, you may have asked, you know, when somebody had a birthday, how many is that in dog years or, or you know, or how many is that in people years if you were talking about our, um, our, our pets. And there's an actual formula and it varies according to breed and size, but a lot of people grew up thinking that there was a seven to one ratio, meaning that for every calendar year that goes by, seven years of our dog's or cat's life lapses. And that's really, you know, unfortunate, but it's not quite that um, large of a number. It does change. It starts off a little more speedily, and then it becomes more like three or four to one for the years. But regardless, our dogs and cats just don't get, enough, or I should say, we just don't get enough time on this planet with the dogs and cats in our lives. But there has been some um, studies done recently about whether there's a correlation between the size of um, an animal and how long he lives. So I'm going to talk to that a little bit today, but I want to just start off with some of the ABCs because obviously that's always a good place to start. And um, part of what dictates how long our pets get to spend time on this planet with us is their ancestry. Just like with us, it's the genes their parents gave them. So, you know, those are the, the cards they've been dealt, and not a whole lot can be done to change that. Now, there are always things. There's diet, there's exercise, there's us getting them to the vets and being proactive by doing head-to-tail checkups to find a problem early and hopefully get it fixed. Um, and there's, you know, the safety aspect of it. If we can keep them out of harm's way, we can keep them with us um, longer. So, you know, that does have an impact on ancestry, but to a certain degree, those cards have been dealt. The B part would be the breed-specific health conditions. Some pets are just more prone to having something, you know, go wrong. And in some cases, it's something cosmetic. Um, sometimes it's like with our white furred pets, they will often um, go deaf like the Dalmatians. Uh, sometimes dogs with blue eyes will go blind. Uh, but none of this is in stone. Uh, certain breeds are more prone to entropian, where the eyelid turns in. That isn't necessarily a longevity issue, but it's a, it's a health condition. Um, Dobermans, uh, Irish setters, Rottweilers are more prone to von Willebrand's disease, which is kind of like hemophilia in humans. So we have to be very careful that they don't get bruised or cut because it can be a much bigger deal for them than it might be for other um, breeds. Ragdolls are more susceptible to hypertrophic, hypertrophic um, cardiomyopathy, a heart condition, whereas Abyssinians often become anemic, and sometimes like um, Border Collies and some other breeds, they have that patellar luxation. They have knee problems. We all know Dachshunds and Basset Hounds, we need to be very careful about their spine just simply because of their anatomy and that longer vertebrae that we really should always have them using um, can't think of the word, ramps, rather than going downstairs and, you know, having uh, a way to get up onto the sofa or off to the, off the bed if you allow them to do so. So there are certain things that if we know about these breed-specific conditions, we can kind of manage them and hopefully prevent a flare-up. Hey, Barbara, nice to see you on there. Good to see you. I, I think you have a house full of animals you are um, pet-sitting while the family's away, huh? Wonderful. And then as far as the C goes, we talked ancestry, we talked breed-specific conditions, and the C stands for calendar. And that's just time marching on. There's not a whole lot we can do about that for ourselves or our pets. Um, most of our super large breed dogs are considered seniors when they may be as young as six, seven years old. Um, our medium ones, maybe we think of that more around 10 or 12. And the small pets and um, kitty cats, for the most part, when they're into their teens, we think of them as being seniors. Cats, basically because the size is pretty 
similar throughout the breeds, um, they have a similar longevity. Siamese tend to live longer than other breeds, but for the most part, we don't have this discrepancy that we have with a Yorkshire Terrier up to an Irish Wolfhound size-wise with our pets. So there isn't as much of a distinction there. But um, besides these things that we've talked about, ancestry, breed-specific conditions, calendar, time marching on, just like us sometimes, um, something just doesn't turn out the way maybe nature intended it. Or maybe that was the way nature intended it, but it's different from the norm. And the amazing, amazing things about our pets is they don't carry along the baggage that we do. They don't know that they were, you know, weren't supposed to be born with one eye that faces that way or only three legs or, you know, a little bit of a hump on the shoulders. They live their life to the fullest. And that's one of the many lessons we can learn from our pets about being in the moment and just, you know, going for the gusto, not letting things hold us back like so many of us do about so many things. Hey, Casey, nice to see you too. Now, we do know that on average, large dogs live um, shorter periods of time than their smaller counterparts. But it's so bizarre in that, you know, mice, if any of you have pocket pets, um, rodents of any kind, hamsters, gerbils, guinea pigs, um, depending on the different species, a lot of them don't live more than, you know, a couple of years, whereas an elephant um, can live as long as us humans and longer than some. So in that respect, size doesn't have a whole lot to do with it. But talking specifically about dogs, there was a Dr. Cornelia Krauss in Germany who did some groundbreaking research about 15 years ago, and she studied something like 56,000 dogs of 75 different breeds and discovered that small dogs do indeed live longer than large dogs. Um, not a real surprise to us because of, you know, all of the those of us that have had animals in our life, we know that difference. But she's also inferred from that she cut and was able to quantify a number that for every 4.4, almost four and a half pounds of body weight, a dog's lifespan decreases by one month. So what my question is, and I haven't been able to find any answer to this yet, but does that also apply to a pet who is overweight or is that just looking at the big scheme of things and measuring the size of a Chihuahua versus a Great Dane. Um, I think it would be an important thing to find out. If anybody sees this statistic, I'm gonna keep looking, but can that also apply for every four and a half pounds of excess body weight? Does you know a pet lose a month of life? Um, I imagine it's probably a different calculation because some pets don't even weigh four pounds and four pounds would be a different percentage of um, overweightedness, if that's a word. Um, depending on the different animal and the breed, but I'm sure there's some connection there as well. But the reason is, and let me take this to dogs and cats as a whole first before even breaking it down um, from big dogs and little dogs, is that from the get-go, our dogs and cats are living at just an advanced um, a speed, so to speak. By day 45 of their life, they have all of their baby teeth in. As humans, it takes about four to six months for us to get our baby teeth. Um, most dogs are, can be sexually active, not that they should, mind you, but most of them have all the working parts by age six months. Um, we know that's quite a bit longer in us humans. Uh, once a, an, a female conceives, the gestation period, the time of that puppy or that kitten in the womb, it's only about 63 days, a little over two months. We know it takes a human baby nine months, um, and actually it's a little bit longer, but to go through the same development. So all of that shows that our dogs and cats are living at an increased or an enhanced speed. They're basically burning out that candle much more quickly than we are. So, you know, that's what pretty much accounts for it. But like I said, nature doesn't really seem to stick to rules because then you would think elephants only were on the planet for, you know, nine months to a year because of their size. And that doesn't hold true. Horses even live into the 20s, 30s, sometimes 40s, um, rarely. But I mean, they live a lot longer and they're a much bigger species. So there is no complete correlation between size and longevity. 
but when talking about canines in specific, there definitely does seem to be. Now, the reason um, Dr. Krauss was coming up with the fact that the smaller dogs do live longer than our larger breeds is for that same thing I um, emphasized a moment ago, that cells are you know, being built faster, they're dividing faster, they're being created faster, and in a smaller breed, um, that that you know holds true as well so uh the bigger breeds often die more of cancer because as a larger as the larger breed of dog those cells are um, duplicating even faster than they are in the smaller dogs so although we don't get as much time on this planet with small dogs um, the faster dogs and the faster dogs now i'm getting my big and fast all mixed up the bigger dogs um are duplicating those cells more quickly and thus ending up with cancer and passing away even quicker than our smaller best friends. Um, it's just the acceleration of everything in their lifetime since, you know, day one. Um, there's also one other thing, and I, I made a note of it here somewhere on my desk. It was a particular home hormone. Um, small dogs have a lower concentration of the growth hormone IGF-1. It's an insulin-like growth factor in their blood than big dogs do. And the proof is that in humans, high levels of this hormone have been associated with increased risk of death from heart disease and cancer. So since humans have it and big dogs have it um, in more of an abundance than smaller dogs, that's the other, I don't wanna say justification because it doesn't justify it, but it's the reason why our larger breeds aren't getting as much time on this earth. Obviously, you know, um, the individual pet, like I mentioned, the, the food, the exercise, our ability to keep them safe or their ability to stay out of trouble often makes um, you know, a huge difference as well in how long pets can live. Very often a pet will look healthy on the outside, but really isn't. So what I wanna leave you with today is that no matter how much time we have on this earth with them, do please do your weekly head to tail checkups so that you can find a problem when it's small and hopefully get it fixed before it becomes a nightmare. Um, also, just um, be in the moment with our pets like they are with us. Um, age, don't think of age as a disease. It's a process that we all hope we're gonna get the ability to go through. And since I sort of started off with a Julie Andrews song at the beginning of this blog talking about, you know, let's start at the very beginning, I'd like to conclude it with another one of mine by one of my faves, George Strait. And let's see if I can even read the lyrics without getting all welled up. But life's not the breath you take, the breathing in and out, that gets you through the day ain't what it's all about. You just might miss the point trying to win the race. Life's not the breath you take, but the moments that take your breath away. So really be in the moment with that great big dog of yours or that little dog or that fluffy cat and just enjoy that time together no matter how it, long it is because none of us have any guarantees. And you know me, I think adopting a senior pet is one of the most amazing things in the world. And I know a lot of people don't wanna do that because they fear they're not gonna have a very long time with the animal. But what I do want you to know is that sometimes you may get a puppy that just for some reason wasn't destined for that long life either. So whoever you have by your side, love them, hug them, be in the moment with them, and let them know how much you care. Have an awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye.